Key amongst others included that we will not participate, as I've indicated, in the government of national unity because that is a plan B for the Oppenheimer family. The EFF continues to be a radical and radical militant and revolutionary economic emancipation movement and will not compromise principle on the altar of political and opportunistic convenience. We remain open to a discussion now and in the future that will result in a government that does not include the DA and the Freedom Front. On a personal account, I've this morning met with the president of the ANC where we had four eyes. And I have expressed the wishes and will not participate with the DA and the Freedom Front uh, in the same cabinet where NSFAS is going to be converted into a student loan, where minimum wage is going to be scrapped, where the gains of 1994 are going to be reversed. We said to the president this morning that despite the fact that we're not participating in the cabinet, will however request him to ask the ANC to support our candidate for the Speaker of Parliament. And in exchange for that, we'll support the ANC's candidature for president because we believe that the party which got the highest number should indeed be the party that leads. If they refuse to give us the Speaker, we are prepared to take the Deputy Speaker on condition that the speaker candidate is from the ANC or from any progressive party, not the DA or the Freedom Front. We further indicated to the president that we are willing to participate in all the committees as chairpersons, and we are not obliged to get as many committees as possible, whatever the ANC feels comfortable with, can allocate those positions to the um, EFF. We said to the president that we are going to request the ANC to stop its paging of MMCs of the EFF at all levels until this kind of engagements are resolved because they are poisonous. We further emphasized to the president that MKP got 45% of the votes in KwaZulu Natal. And if the principle is he must be supported to be president because he's got 40% of the votes. The same principle should apply in KwaZulu-Natal. And if the ANC has not had engagement with MKP and feels strongly that it will not vote for the MKP, the most advisable thing to do will be to abstain. I indicated to the president this morning that any other move outside the MKP it's a provocation to the people of KZN. And we must not blame them if they are to react to what these reactionaries would have agreed to, to undermine the direction which the people of KwaZulu-Natal have given. We have made it very clear uh, to the president that we are not against the government of national unity. We are against the inclusion of the DA and the Freedom Front Plus, because that represent imperialism, represent racism and white supremacy, represent backwardness. And I must indicate that I've stated categorically to the president that the speaker we are requesting for and the chairpersons of committees will not include me. I will not make myself available because I know part of the difficulty they have is with my name. And if that will compromise the government of national unity and a stable parliament and government, I've since withdrawn my name from all possible positions in exchange for a stable government and the parliament of the Republic of South Africa. We have sent the name of our national chairperson as a speaker, Veronica Mente, alternatively as a deputy speaker, and our deputy president as the chairperson of the finance committee, as the most qualified and long-serving member of that particular committee, and the rest of the other committees, they will allocate us and will be able to do the necessary deployment at that particular time. This is where we stand in relation to the government of national unity. 
and the negotiations we have had with all political parties, except political parties funded by the Oppenheimer family. We see this as a fight back by the Oppenheimers against the EFF for its position, which exposed them that they wanted to buy South Africa with the monies that they have, and they failed. This that you see today of the ANC, DA, IFP, and all of that is a plan B of the Oppenheimers to hijack our democracy. This is a clear fight back by the Oppenheimers. The EFF members must act with restraint and the highest form of discipline. They must not be easily shaken by forces of darkness. The EFF members must know that we are in for a big fight, and this fight is inevitable. We are ready for it, and they must not be scared or be intimidated by anyone. We ask and make a strong appeal to those who have uncontrollable ambitions for positions in government of national unity not to do that in the name of the EFF. Ours is not an immediate achievement. Ours is a generational mission. And that mission will be attained in our lifetime. If this is our last participation in Parliament and in the legislatures, so be it. But history will record that we have made a contribution. We must not be so disparate to participate in government, including a government that is compromised and a government that is controlled by imperialism and foreign agents uh, who want to exploit and continue to exploit the mineral resources of South Africa. All those who are now having uncontrollable ambition for power and are advised by those who have always opposed the EFF should ask themselves as to what interest do these people now represent when they speak like they want the EFF when they have not for a very long time did not support the EFF. We know that we'll have family members, we'll have friends, we'll have business partners who see this as an opportunity for immediate accumulation. Let that temptation not be surrendered to. Let the discipline of the EFF reign supreme amongst the leaders and the members of our organization. We believe in the militancy and the radicalism of the EFF. We believe in the unity of purpose for the EFF, and we believe strongly that it is this collective effort and united forces of the left that will win against forces of darkness. I thank you.